OCD2. This is the Cambridge Preliminary English Test, number three. There are four parts to the test. You will hear each part twice. For each part of the test, there will be time for you to look through the questions and time for you to check your answers. Write your answers on the question paper. You will have six minutes at the end of the test to copy your answers onto the answer sheet. The recording will now be stopped. Please ask any questions now because you must not speak during the test. Now open your question paper and look at part one. There are seven questions in this part. For each question, there are three pictures and a short recording. Choose the correct picture and put a tick in the box below it. Before we start, here is an example. What's the time? Have you got the time? Yes, it's twenty past three. The first picture is correct, so there is a tick in box A. Look at the three pictures for question one now. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear each recording twice. One. What is the man going to buy? Is everything ready for the holiday? I'm just going shopping. I must get those pills I take when I feel travel sick. Do we need anything else at the chemist's? We forgot the toothpaste last time. I've got that. I haven't got any sunglasses, but I can borrow yours, can't I? And I'll get something to read at the airport. Right. Now listen again. Is everything ready for the holiday? I'm just going shopping. I must get those pills I take when I feel travel sick. Do we need anything else at the chemist's? <laughs> we forgot the toothpaste last time. I've got that. I haven't got any sunglasses, but I can borrow yours, can't I? And I'll get something to read at the airport. Right. Two. Which dress is Kate talking about? Oh, Mum, this dress is still dirty. It can't be, Kate. I've only just washed it. Well, it is. The mark on the collar has gone, but there's still a small one here. Look, it's at the front, just below the button. It's where I spilt some coke last week. Now listen again. Oh, Mum, this dress is still dirty. It can't be, Kate. I've only just washed it. Well, it is. The mark on the collar has gone, but there's still a small one here. Look, it's at the front, just below the button. It's where I spilt some coke last week. Three. When will Jane meet them? Hi, it's Pete here. Jane left a message to say she can't meet us at eight o'clock as planned because her bus doesn't get in till eight fifteen, and it'll take her thirty minutes to get from the centre of town. I told her the table's actually booked for eight forty-five, so that would be fine, and we'll see her then. Now listen again. Hi, it's Pete here. Jane left a message to say she can't meet us at eight o'clock as planned because her bus doesn't get in till eight fifteen, and it'll take her thirty minutes to get from the centre of town. I told her the table's actually booked for eight forty-five, so that would be fine, and we'll see her then. Four. Which morning activity is for beginners?
At 10 a.m. tomorrow morning, there will be swimming lessons at both intermediate and beginner level. Then there will be volleyball practice at 11.30 for all those of you who are already in one of the teams. Also in the morning, for those of you who already know how to sail, there's a chance to do some practice on your own. There will be lessons in both sailing and windsurfing for beginners after lunch. Now listen again. At 10 a.m. tomorrow morning, there will be swimming lessons at both intermediate and beginner level. Then there will be volleyball practice at 11.30 for all those of you who are already in one of the teams. Also in the morning, for those of you who already know how to sail, there's a chance to do some practice on your own. There will be lessons in both sailing and windsurfing for beginners after lunch. Five. Which painting does the woman decide to buy? They're all nice, but you see a lot of flowers everywhere these days, don't you? So that wouldn't be my choice. The same goes for animals, actually. Although I do quite like the one of the horses. So it looks like it'll have to be the one with the boats. It will be a change from that bowl of fruit I've had on the wall all these years anyway. Now listen again. They're all nice, but you see a lot of flowers everywhere these days, don't you? So that wouldn't be my choice. The same goes for animals, actually. Although I do quite like the one of the horses. So it looks like it'll have to be the one with the boats. It will be a change from that bowl of fruit I've had on the wall all these years anyway. Six. What is the man selling? And this is the latest model by MacPoint. You'll find it's even quicker at doing your washing up and needs less water. And it's very easy to use, as easy as turning on your shower. Now listen again. And this is the latest model by MacPoint. You'll find it's even quicker at doing your washing up and needs less water. And it's very easy to use, as easy as turning on your shower. Seven. What is the weather forecast for tomorrow? It's been typical spring weather today, sunshine and showers. The next 24 hours should be dry but cloudy. Things look better for the next week with Monday being a fine sunny day and the following day mild but windy. Now listen again. It's been typical spring weather today, sunshine and showers. The next 24 hours should be dry but cloudy. Things look better for the next week with Monday being a fine sunny day and the following day mild but windy. That is the end of part one. Now turn to part two, questions eight to thirteen. You will hear a radio presenter talking about new books. For each question, put a tick in the correct box. You now have 45 seconds to look at the questions for part two.
Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. Welcome to this week's book program. We've got lots of great new books to tell you about. My Life by Joe Wrigley will keep all fans of Joe's stories happy for hours. It explains a lot about where his ideas come from, and gives a picture of what was happening in his life when he was working on his most successful books. I must say, though, that some of it is difficult to understand if you haven't read his other books. Now, for those of you who like a good cry, "Goodbye to the Fields" by Susan Marks tells the sad story of John, a small boy who has to leave the countryside he loves. When the family moved to London because of his father's job, John and his mother would prefer to stay where they are. It's a long time before the family begins to feel comfortable living in the big city. There are plenty of books with helpful advice this week. First, the A to Z of photography would make a great present for anyone just starting out with a camera. It has everything you need to know to take really good photos and learn about cameras, film, lighting, and so on. This is not one for the experienced photographer, though. There's not much advanced information here. Turning to the kitchen, Cooking for One by Adrian White says on its cover that even people who hate cooking will find it useful. <laughs> A month ago, I couldn't even boil an egg. But now I'm producing all sorts of dishes, some quite difficult, and yes, they taste quite good too. I'm actually enjoying cooking now. I'm now going to try a new book about cooking Italian food. The last book this week is Holidays in Europe by Mary Curtis. This is an enjoyable read, which will start your imagination working as you plan for next year's holiday. It doesn't matter that the writer doesn't talk about the famous places everyone visits, but describes lots of small places away from the main tourist areas. The maps are too small to be useful, but the book is still good value for money. That's it for this week. Then, next week there's a special report on giving books as presents. So, if you've saved up your money and you're wondering what to get for a friend or relation for their birthdays. You might get some good ideas. I look forward to talking to you then. Now listen again. Welcome to this week's book program. We've got lots of great new books to tell you about. My Life by Joe Wrigley will keep all fans of Joe's stories happy for hours. It explains a lot about where his ideas come from. And gives a picture of what was happening in his life when he was working on his most successful books. I must say, though, that some of it is difficult to understand if you haven't read his other books. Now, for those of you who like a good cry, "Goodbye to the Fields" by Susan Marks tells the sad story of John, a small boy who has to leave the countryside he loves when the family moved to London because of his father's job. John and his mother would prefer to stay where they are. It's a long time before the family begins to feel comfortable living in the big city. There are plenty of books with helpful advice this week. First, the A to Z of photography would make a great present for anyone just starting out with a camera. It has everything you need to know to take really good photos and learn about cameras, film, lighting, and so on. This is not one for the experienced photographer, though. There's not much advanced information here. Turning to the kitchen, "Cooking for One" by Adrian White says on its cover that even people who hate cooking will find it useful. <laughs> A month ago, I couldn't even boil an egg, but now I'm producing all sorts of dishes, some quite difficult, and yes, they taste quite good too. I'm actually enjoying cooking now. I'm now going to try a new book about cooking Italian food. The last book this week is Holidays in Europe by Mary Curtis. This is an enjoyable read, 
which will start your imagination working as you plan for next year's holiday. It doesn't matter that the writer doesn't talk about the famous places everyone visits, but describes lots of small places away from the main tourist areas. The maps are too small to be useful, but the book is still good value for money. That's it for this week. Then, next week there's a special report on giving books as presents. So, if you've saved up your money and you're wondering what to get for a friend or relation for their birthdays. You might get some good ideas. I'll look forward to talking to you then. That is the end of part. Two. Now turn to part three, questions fourteen to nineteen. You will hear a teacher talking about a camping trip. For each question, fill in the missing information in the numbered space. You now have twenty seconds to look at part three. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. Thank you all for coming. I'm going to give you the final details of our camping trip next week. You may like to make some notes as there's a lot to remember. The coach will be outside the school on Monday morning at seven thirty, and we will set off at seven forty-five. So don't be late. There'll be room on the coach for one bag each, so please don't bring more than one bag or suitcase.、Uh, you don't need to bring tents or food, as that's all provided for us. But you will need to bring a sleeping bag. It turns cold at night, so bring some warm clothes too. If we're lucky, though, the sun will shine, and we'll be able to use the outdoor pool on the site. So don't forget your swimming things. On to pocket money. Please don't bring too much. We can't keep a lot of money safe. Five pounds per day should be plenty, so you can buy souvenirs and drinks while we are out visiting places. You'll probably also want to bring some extra money for the last day when you are free. The campsite is in the middle of the countryside, so if you've had enough fresh air by then, you may want to go shopping in the nearest town, about eight miles away. That's Southport. There's plenty to do there, and there's a bus that stops outside the post office in the village down the road. I'll point it out to you when we get there. On Friday afternoon, before you leave college, please look at the notice board in the entrance hall, as there may be some changes to the arrangements, which I need to tell you about. Now, has anyone got any questions? Now listen again. Thank you all for coming. I'm going to give you the final details of our camping trip next week. You may like to make some notes, as there's a lot to remember. The coach will be outside the school on Monday morning at seven thirty, and we will set off at seven forty-five. So don't be late. There'll be room on the coach for one bag each, so please don't bring more than one bag or suitcase. You don't need to bring tents or food, as that's all provided for us. But you will need to bring a sleeping bag. It turns cold at night, so bring some warm clothes too. If we're lucky, though, the sun will shine, and we'll be able to use the outdoor pool on the site. So don't forget your swimming things. On to pocket money. Please don't bring too much. We can't keep a lot of money safe. Five pounds per day should be plenty, so you can buy souvenirs and drinks while we are out visiting places. You'll probably also want to bring some extra money for the last day when you are free. The campsite is in the middle of the countryside, so 
If you've had enough fresh air by then, you may want to go shopping in the nearest town, about eight miles away. That's Southport. There's plenty to do there, and there's a bus that stops outside the post office in the village down the road. I'll point it out to you when we get there. On Friday afternoon, before you leave college, please look at the notice board in the entrance hall, as there may be some changes to the arrangements which I need to tell you about. Now, has anyone got any questions? That is the end of part three. Now turn to part 4, questions 20 to 25. Look at the six sentences for this part. You will hear a conversation between a girl, Lisa, and a boy, Ben, about holidays. Decide if each sentence is correct or incorrect. If it is correct, put a tick in the box under A for yes. If it is not correct, put a tick in the box under B for no. You now have 20 seconds to look at the questions for part 4. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. Hi, Ben. Only one more week at college and then the summer holidays begin. Great, isn't it? I don't know. It might get a bit boring. I don't think I've got enough money to go anywhere nice for a holiday this year. It would be nice to have lots of money to spend, but a good holiday doesn't have to be expensive. Oh, yes, it does. The best holiday I ever had was a few years ago, when I went to Greece. I wanted to fly off somewhere hot and lie on the beach and go swimming. Yes, well, I can't afford to do that either. So, what are you doing this summer? I'm going on a walking holiday in Scotland with some friends. We went last year and we really enjoyed it. We walked all day and spent the nights in youth hostels. Why don't you come with us? We're going for two weeks. It won't cost much, and you'll come home feeling really relaxed and fit. Mm, I'm not sure. Walking all day sounds like hard work to me. And surely you're not hoping for lots of sunshine in Scotland. It did rain a bit last year, but most of the time it was sunny. Anyway, it's not good walking in the heat. You have to stop all the time to rest and have drinks. Well, I like the sun. And I like to stay in comfortable hotels, not youth hostels. But they are comfortable. They're basic, and the food's often not very good, but they're very clean and cheap. In fact, I prefer them to hotels because the people are always so friendly. Hmm, maybe. Look, Lisa, thanks a lot for asking me, but I think I'll just stay home and get bored. Now listen again. Hi, Ben. Only one more week at college and then the summer holidays begin. Great, isn't it? I don't know. It might get a bit boring. I don't think I've got enough money to go anywhere nice for a holiday this year. It would be nice to have lots of money to spend, but a good holiday doesn't have to be expensive. Oh, yes, it does. The best holiday I ever had was a few years ago when I went to Greece. I want to fly off somewhere hot and lie on the beach and go swimming. Yes, well, I can't afford to do that either. So what are you doing this summer? I'm going on a walking holiday in Scotland with some friends. We went last year and we really enjoyed it. We walked all day and spent the nights in youth hostels. Why don't you come with us? We're going for two weeks. It won't cost much, and you'll come home feeling really relaxed and fit. Mm, I'm not sure. Walking all day sounds like hard work to me. 
And surely you're not hoping for lots of sunshine in Scotland. <laughs> it did rain a bit last year, but most of the time it was sunny. Anyway, it's not good walking in the heat. You have to stop all the time to rest and have drinks. Well, I like the sun, and I like to stay in comfortable hotels, not youth hostels. But they are comfortable. They're basic, and the food's often not very good, but they're very clean and cheap. In fact, I prefer them to hotels because the people are always so friendly. Hmm, maybe. Look, Lisa, thanks a lot for asking me, but I think I'll just stay home and get bored. That is the end of part four. You now have six minutes to check and copy your answers onto the answer sheet. That is the end of the test.